Hey guys, how's it going? So this is a long, long overdue uh, video response to Dark Top 57's uh, Gentlemen's to Tactical Folder. Um, kind of look, uh, his look at his history on uh, like knife uh, purchasing trends and kind of where he's at. Um, and I thought I'd do a <coughs> video response since I haven't, you know, done one in a while. Um, unfortunately, this one took a little longer than expected. But here we are. Uh, before we begin, uh, just two small announcements. One, Brother Beard, uh, I tried contacting you about the uh, contest win, and I haven't heard back from you yet. It's been about a month. Uh, I'll give you another week, and uh, if you, if I don't hear back from you, I'm going to forfeit your win to uh, the third place winner. And the next one is, um, I've done this video a couple times, and it just never was right, but um, it is a longer, it's going to be a longer video, and uh, I don't produce my own saliva really, because I have my parotid gland taken out. Uh, almost 17 years ago so uh, you're gonna see me taking a lot of sips of water just to keep my mouth from becoming too dry so I just want to apologize ahead of time uh, just get one more sip before we start here all right uh, I'm gonna lay out on this format just because it looks more like I'm talking to you since it's a discussion video um, and for Dark Child 57, uh, he had more of a, uh, how do I say it, a more exact, I wouldn't really say that, but there was like a clear, you know, when, when he talked about his progression, there was a clear, um, type of knife he really liked during a certain period, you know, tactile, Tactical, gentleman's folder, gentleman's folder. Although, um, I gotta say, uh, you know, knowing you, or I should say him, um, over all three of these years, he's always kind of favored, um, that kind of gentleman's folder look, you know, with the bolsters and stuff like that, uh, as well as Tantos. But for me, I don't think I have or had a particular genre of knife that I just stayed in. Like, uh, tactical, just staying in tactile, or, you know, just really liking knives that are Tanto or Warncliffe, or whatever, you know? Uh, I just, I've always just kind of looked at knives, and if I liked it, you know, I, I never kind of paid attention to it. Maybe it's a little harder just because, you know, I'm trying to look within myself and see what I bought, but uh, you can kind of see on the table here, um, most of the knives that I have that I went ahead and bought myself, with the exception of this one, which uh, was a gift from Darktail 57 just last year, um, but I wanted to put it in there for other reasons. Um, I kind of, you know, there's a couple of things that I do um, look into. I'll just call them like principles or, you know, whatever. Um, like te technology, um, aesthetics, and like fun. So I go through them a little bit, you know, with the progression of the knives here. So to start from the beginning, <clears throat> This was my very first uh, major uh, knife purchase, or folding knife purchase. Uh, I've always had like, you know, cheaper gas station knives. Uh, or like Swiss Army knives, but nothing major. Around 2008-2007 uh, was when I started really getting into uh, folding knives. And one of the things that I do when jumping into um, you know, a hobby or something. I do a lot, a lot of research. Um, and one of the things I really like is t new technology. 
Um, I know it's kind of you know, contradictory to the current trend, but I've always liked new, uh, new tech. I look forward to it, get excited about it, stuff like that. Um, so, when I was doing research on, you know, just getting my feet with all this stuff out there, each one came up uh, as a voice seal. I thought it was really cool. You know, being corrosion res pretty much fully corrosion resistant and uh, rust proof. I thought it was really awesome steel that, you know, and I haven't heard about it. The other thing is, this is the first kind of uh, exposure to the spire hole. And I just thought that was, you know, the coolest thing. So this is, I happened upon the Spire Cup Pacific Salt. Um, this is the first folding knife, but not the exact one, because uh, the first Pacific Salt that I got was actually an 11, and I had to return it for warranty. But you can see this is a pre this is an older one, because you know you can see it's, uh, it still has the rivets. Uh, the newer ones all have screw construction, but you know just overall very nice knife. Well, one hand, hand opening it is. Uh, with that H1 steel being that new technology. So, you know, new seals are always really fun to look into and stuff like that. So this one. So this is the first one, new technology blade steel. Now, once I delved even deeper, um, you know, I looked more into Damascus and such. I really like, you know, kind of pretty things. Uh, Damascus being kind of a pain in me and some of the steels out there. So the uh, Raindrop Damascus really caught my eye. I knew I had to try and get it, so I saved up for a while and then put in my order with um, Chris Reeve. And it took about a year, and I was able to finally get it. And uh, that Raindrop Damascus there, just a beautiful knife. Um, it's been my EDC I've been opening and closing, carrying it for the, you know, s seven years now. And man, seriously, I've opened and closed this thing so much that this actually has uh, up and down give. <laughs> but uh, speaking of aesthetics, around this time, um, I also quickly realized that most of my collection was pretty monotone. I mean, it is right now too, but I made more of a conscious effort whenever I could to um, put in some color. That's kind of the unfortunate thing is uh, when I see a design, it's usually um, not in a variety of colors. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one of them being in order to have color, you know, it's usually either like G10 or whatever, but, um, so the other colors tend to be a lot more expensive. So, you know, uh, titanium being anodized, um, uh, or Tamascus, Mogotai, stuff like that, it, you know, especially the, the latter, really add a huge premium, um, to the knife, so, a lot of times those things, um, are kind of uh, out of the question because they're so expensive and you know the design doesn't really justify the price tag for me so you know but whenever I see something and there's a possibility for color I try to incorporate it when I can um, and moving on to the kind of the aspect of I guess fun um, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where uh, I've been collecting for a while, uh, almost, you know, again, almost 10 years. And so that allowed me to have a pretty big collection, or at least a good enough collection, where I have a set um, few knives that I tend to keep as uh, my EDC. So, you, which are usually like in this, you know, this area, um, especially these two, I just have, you know, have laying around. 
also my HMO2, which is not here. Uh, but I also, you know, do use the 562 Clive Reef for food stuff. Uh, the slicer right works very well, you know, name implied, right? Um, but uh, I do tend to come to this a lot. Um, yeah, this would be kind of the one of the more ideal EDCs. Um, and it's just so lightweight, you just kind of gravitate towards it because it's just so easy to pocket. Uh, it does come with a wire clip, but you know, I just take it off for ease of carry. But it is extremely, extremely lightweight. Um, you, you can open it one handed, whether it's left or right, so it's ambi. Um, I can even use the just my thumb to disengage it instead of having to use you know the pinch grip for it. It's extremely ergonomic. I mean, you have all of these finger grooves there, so you can just hold on to it whichever way you want. I do tend to use it like this for a lot of uh, more controlled package opening when I have a little bit more sensitive stuff in the package, like clothes or papers or something like that. Uh, there's well-intentioned um, jimping. It doesn't really work out that well because, you know, this is kind of spotty jimping on the FRN, but it's still there and, you know, it adds a little bit as well as right here. It does have some fantastic jimping on the actual blade in the choil and on top for a fantastic grip. And, you know, this kind of, you know, multi-directional um, radial uh, how should I cut out or whatnot? Like gives you a really great grip. Um, the Spyrico logo there is flattened, and um, that helps with the pop clip. You know, it sits right there, so it doesn't unnecessarily ruin your clothes. So it's just a fantastic overall knife. The only gripe with this version is uh. The blade seal is kind of like os um, maybe a little bit lower. It loses its edge super quick, so... Uh, luckily, you know, for most people right now, you can get the S10 version for just a little bit more, uh, with that fantastic steel. Uh, unfortunately, I bought this a long time ago, and um, I... W I didn't really want to buy another one, um, but the orange one from Cutlery Shop was a fantastic one. Uh, I do kind of regret not buying that sometimes, because s 9 v is one of my more favored steels, and the Spyrico's orange is just fantastic. It's one of the best ones on the market, in my opinion. So, um, if you can, if you can get that orange, that orange is a fantastic buy, but just the ergonomics and the, you know, the overall use of the uh, lightweight Manix is really superb for EDC. And of course, you know, it's, it's rather the uh, paramilitary 2, which everyone knows and loves, has fantastic ergos similarly uh, with the compression lock, you know, so this one I had for uh, just as long. Uh, I pre-ordered it right when it came out, so I really put my mileage on this particular uh, pair of twos. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, but, you know... Oh, where was I? I was going from EDC to... Uh, fun. So, in regards to that, you know, I have my set of EDC knives, so... I'm able to put more uh, of a focus on knives I can just look at for fun, or um, even just knives that most people would call safe cleans. I tend to call them in bed EDC because you know, I'm just playing around with it and admiring it in bed most of the time while I'm watching a movie or a TV show or something, I'm just sitting there uh, opening and closing it, just like admiring it, you know. From how the knife feels to uh, open and close, to the depression of the lock bar, 
how it flips out, whether you know it's using that thumb hole there or the flipper mechanism. It's you know, there's just so much fun to be had. And I just play around with that a lot. So uh, luckily, again, I can focus on a lot of that stuff. And I guess that's kind of the you know, if you want to call it a genre, that's just my main focus nowadays is, you know, picking that one deck that I think is really cool and saving up for uh, it. Uh, but yeah, on some of those knives I have here, uh, you know, speaking of like um, a certain aesthetic or something, I do have to like a lot of ZT knives. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of them are kind of monotone or great scale. There is two knives here that um, were one of those times where you look at it and you go, you know, I really have to have it. Like, it's just one of those things like, you know you will regret it if you don't at least make a damn good uh, effort. So, first one is the triple seven. And not this particular one, but the Damascus one. Oh man, that just, it was just like everything, right? It had everything. New technology, the aesthetics, just, man, it looked fantastic. You know, with the herringbone Damascus right at the top right here. Uh, it's really a shame what happened, you know, not just the uh, drama, but the production issues that they had. Um, it would, would have been a really a great type of piece, but uh, I'm still lucky enough to have this one, which is the M390 uh, variant. And uh, you know, it also had one of their newer tech, which was the subframe lock, which allows them to have this frame lock with, you know, on say G10 or uh, car fiber in this case. Um, without actually having the full frame be um, titanium or steel. It still allows them to have a really, uh, a really light knife. So, there's that, the triple seven. The other knife, um, that when I looked at it, that really spoke to me was the tilt. And the angles with it, um, as well as the steel on this being Van X75. Never really, never heard of it. And I'm trying to do a lot of research on it. Um, it's even more rare now, I think, because they stopped production. Uh, it's discontinued, so. It's just one of those cool things to have kind of a piece of history, if you will. Uh, but again, it feels great in hand. It's just one of those knives that the design really spoke to me. So, uh, you know, and that kind of covers everything, you know, aesthetics, new technology, whether it's um, a new lock bar, uh, new steel, uh, whether it's color or Damascus or, you know, how fun it would be to have and play around with. Um, you know, that's about it. It's a pretty long video. Um, yeah, I think, <laughs> let's see. Shoot, I thought it was going to be way longer than this, but I guess it's already pretty long. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching, and hope you guys have a good one. Take care.